The first Hispanic Heritage Week presidential proclamation was issued in 1968 by President Lyndon Johnson. Twenty years later, Congress passed a law that expanded the commemoration to a full month. The next group of artists that Natalie Pozo introduces you to to celebrate their culture year-round through their expression of art. Gloria Stefan. Alejandro Sanz. Toto La Mompocina. Internationally renowned musicians travel from all over the world to Boston to perform with a carefully curated group of musicians from Berklee College of Music. It's all part of the Berkeley Latino program led by four-time Grammy winner Oscar Stagnado. When I moved to Boston, this is funny, the first gig that I got was playing country with Western music. The Peruvian bass player eventually returned to his musical roots and to the classroom to teach. Oscar, you know, uh, Berkeley is looking for a bass player. Do you want to teach at Berkeley? And I said, let me think. And I said, yes. <laughs> Stagnado was hired in 1987 and expanded the school's Latin music curriculum while continuing to work as a musician. Today, he's considered one of the top Latin bass players in the world. Rhythm, melody, and harmony, that's the way these stairs are built in music. In 2014, the school formally launched Berkeley Latino to elevate the education, awareness, and appreciation of Latin music and its cultural impact on the world. Fabiola Mendez first learned of the initiative when the school held one of its on-the-road programs in her native Puerto Rico. You get the opportunity to study with Berkeley professors that come down to the island and teach about theory, performance, and you also get to perform with other people from all around the island that come to the program. Mendez also auditioned, first earning a summer program scholarship, then acceptance as a student, performing the Puerto Rican Cuatro. The reason why it's called Cuatro, it originally had four double strings. Later on in its history and development, they added a fifth double string, but they kept the name Cuatro. Mendez started playing the instrument when she was six years old, and in 2015 performed with legendary Colombian singer Toto La Mompocina. For me, that's, you know, whatever we teach, that's the purpose for, to have the students, like, step up and go to the next level and make the connection. A hands-on global education. You have the opportunity to play music with the person from the country, because that's the best way to learn. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Toledo. And my sign name is Joe. My name is Domenico, and my sign name is Domenico, D on the air. My sign name is this right here, Joe, and the reason why, my last name is Toledo. In Spain, Toledo means bull. You know, ole, 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 right? Either a friend or another person or family member will pick your sign name for you. It's based on your personality. I love James. Joe Toledo and his 13-year-old son, Dominico, live in Milford with Dominico's older sisters, Belinda and Zarita, baby brother, Amir, and their mother, Laura. Yeah, it's a lot on my plate, but I love it no matter what, and I wouldn't change a thing. Family has always played a fundamental role in Joe's life. He was born in Miami after his mother and grandmother moved to the U.S. from Honduras. They moved to America for a better life, for a better job, and for a betterment for me. When he was six months old, Joe spiked a fever, and his family brought him to a nearby clinic. The doctor there, when they were testing my ears, they jabbed both of my ears, and there was a pop in both of them. And so I was sent to the hospital, and when they brought me to the hospital, uh, I lost my hearing at, from that encounter at the clinic. Despite what happened, Joe and his family don't lament that life-altering moment. 
My grandmother and my mother, they always told me, you're so handsome, you're so smart, we love you, you can have everything. So they looked at me as a person and not as someone with a hearing loss. Growing up, my family would get together for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, and other family events. And when we would come together as Hondurans, they would dance. And I learned how to dance, and I really enjoyed dancing. However, communication was still a challenge. At home, Joe's family spoke Spanish, and at school, there was only speech therapy. American Sign Language was not taught. But then, his family relocated to Boston. Having American Sign Language as a primary language for me was a crucial point for me. Joe attended Horace Mann School for the Deaf, and through that curriculum, he started acting at the Wheelock Family Theater. In PA, the Deaf Youth Theater Group, they taught me American Sign Language, they taught me inclusions, body movements, facial expressions, and so I really became entrenched in the Deaf community from that experience. Joe also learned that performing was a real passion of his. I feel like I was born an actor. Decades later, Joe was able to answer that calling, along with his son. Both Dominico and Joe were cast in the movie Sound of Metal, the Oscar-winning story of a heavy metal drummer who loses his hearing. I was feeling relaxed because of the vibrations. I can feel the vibration, the boom, 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 boom. Both Dominico and Joe say the 2018 filming in Massachusetts was a rich experience for them, getting to be on a movie set, collaborating with other deaf actors, and working with director Darius Martyr. My favorite time on set was dinner at the table. We were all laughing and talking, but it really, really happened. Because that scene wasn't in the script, and actually in that moment, as they were filming, we were just talking normally, and we started talking about sports and everything, and we were enjoying and having a fun moment, and then they really, they put that moment, that experience, in the film. <laughs> An example of art imitating life for the Toleros. Well, I hope this movie portrays to other folks out in the hearing world that they can see our world, our deaf, our deaf lives every day, how we live. That we're noisy, <laughs> just like them. In addition to increasing awareness, they hope this movie creates more opportunities for deaf actors. Deaf people can do anything. So that means that anything that a hearing person can do, we can be pilots, we can do interviews, as we're doing right now, with an interpreter. <laughs> we could drive, we can do everything. We just can't hear. So I want the hearing world to look and see, don't feel sorry and pity us, that we're just like you. We're normal. And thank you to James Wiggins, a longtime friend of the Toledo family, who served as the hearing interpreter for the interview. So back to Fabiola Mendez. Her most recent album, Afro Riqueña, is available on Spotify. And in addition to Puerto Rico, Berkeley Latino also has educational outreach programs in Mexico, Spain, and Colombia, and other countries. And the school looks very hopeful about resuming those programs as soon as it's safe.